Today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savelle. No matter how deep, how dark, how bad that thing is that you did and that shame that you've been walking around in, that you can be free from it, free from it once and for all because I know I don't look like a girl that walks in shame anymore and you can have that same freedom in your life. glad that you get to hang out with me today. My name is Jerry Ann Savelle and my dad has given me the great honor of being able to get to share with you from my book, Living Unashamed. You know, the enemy will come when you've messed up and you've blown it and then he throws shame on you. And that's what we're talking about today in the last several weeks is just getting free from that place of shame. I want to read to you from my book, Shame is one of the enemy's favorite tools of reproach. It will follow you around and whisper reminders of your every mistake and every failure. Shame loves to flaunt its disapproval and disappointment in you and your wayward ways of the past. I lived there. I know what that's like. You know, people, you can see it on their demeanor and on their face and on their countenance and the way they carry themselves and hold themselves. And today we're going to be talking from the book, chapters three and four, come right in. And I'll tell you what that means in just a minute and lift your head. There was a time in my life when I was so embarrassed to go out. I stayed in my house for a lot of years, too embarrassed to go out. But I remember one time I had to go in the grocery store and at the time where I lived, it was near, uh, I knew a lot of people, and those people knew what I had done, and they knew the sin that I had committed. And going in the grocery store for me was a hard place to go because I knew I was going to run into somebody. And oftentimes when you're in shame, you don't want to make eye contact with anybody. And I remember like pushing my cart and, and trying to keep my eyes down and and not make eye contact with anybody. And of course, I would run into somebody. And I remember another time I went to an event. I finally got out. I got the courage. And I was like, I'm going to go to this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be strong. And the first person I ran into, the very thing they said to me, very first thing they said to me is, I'll never forget where I was when I heard what you did. And I remember it took everything in me to walk back to my car. And as I was walking back to my car, I could feel my countenance. I could feel my demeanor. I could feel myself cowering down to that shame. And I walked back in my, I drove home, walked back in my house, and I collapsed in my bed of despair, in my home, my pit of shame. So I know what it's like to live in that place. But I'm telling you today that I'm not there anymore. I'm in front of you today. I'm in a free place because I got fed up. I got tired of the enemy dragging me around and that shame being attached to me that I finally got up and I got free. And you overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. And that's what I'm doing today is declaring to you that no matter how deep, how dark, how bad that thing is that you did and that shame that you've been walking around in, that you can be free from it, free from it once and for all, because I know I don't look like a girl that walks in shame anymore, and you can have that same freedom in your life. I want to tell you that whatever you did back then is in the past. It's over and done with. If God's forgiven you, and you've forgiven yourself, then it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter the way people treat you. When I came out of my shame place, I knew there was a calling on my life. I knew I was still called because his calling is irrevocable in our lives. He's not going to take that calling away from you because you messed up. So when you go to him, get forgiveness, you get right back on track. Well, one year, once I'd come out of the shame place, I decided to do something with my gift. 
and I decided to have a book club, a Bible study for women in my home. And one of the women I invited to my home, she had invited another girl. And this girl knew what I had done. She knew about my past. And she said, oh, I, I like Jerry Ann and everything, but I just can't get over what she did. And I remember at that moment, I had to make a choice in my life. Am I going to go with what people say about me, or am I going to move forward with what God has for my life? And although that feeling of shame wanted to creep up on me, I had to resist it and keep moving forward and keep pushing despite what other people think. So there may be people in your life that never get past what you did, but that's okay because if God's forgiven you and you've forgiven yourself, then I'm telling you, just get back up and keep moving forward. Today, I want to talk to you about redemption in Christ. You are the righteousness of God. And when you get that revelation on the inside of you, it's going to cause you to have your head raised high, not in arrogance or pride, but in a confidence that you know who you are in Christ. I know who I am in Christ. I know that I'm a child of God. I know that he loves me. And that when you get that revelation down on the inside of you, then your head will never be down. It will always be lifted up. One of the scriptures that helped me during this shame process, this getting out of shame to become free in him was Hebrews 4.16. And it says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, when it says come boldly, that's not a fearful or timid approach. That's not like coming to God and saying, you know, I'm not worthy. I'm just a filthy person and I'm not worthy of your love. No, boldly says you come to him, his throne of grace. He sits on a throne of grace for you. So you boldly come to his throne and you accept that love. You accept his grace. You accept that mercy in your time of need. Boldly means without hesitation or fear. It means courageously. It means without worrying about the opinion or judgment of others. Many times I've had to see myself as a child of God going to Father God and standing boldly in front of Him. Not only do I see Him, do I see myself standing boldly, sometimes I go see myself crawling up in His lap because He's my Daddy God. And I sit up in His lap and I say, Father God, I need Your grace today. I need Your mercy. I need Your love. I know He loves me, but I just need to feel Your love today. That's the kind of relationship I have with the Heavenly Father. You know, with my own parents, I don't stand. They have a gate in front of their house. And I don't have to stand in front of their gate and say, Mother, Father, will you let me in? Please, I know I'm not worthy. I know I've made so many mistakes. But please, may I come in? No, you know what? Because I'm their child, they've given me access to their gate. And I push a gate opener. I have a garage opener and I use that. I know the code to the house and I walk boldly and courageously in because you know why? I am their child. I can. Not only that, I open the refrigerator and I get me something to drink because I'm their child and they've given me access to their home. And I'm telling you today, that's the kind of access you have to Father God that you can go boldly to the throne of grace for help in time of need. Now we're just getting into this. I got a whole lot more to share with you, but I want you to watch this product offer and I'll be right back. Could fear and insecurity be holding you back from God's best for your life? Today's special offer, the Living Unashamed Special Package, contains Jerry Savelle's revealing book, You Were Created for His Glory his three-part audio series, Overcoming the Spirit of Hopelessness, along with his daughter, Jerry Ann's eye-opening book, Living Unashamed. Shame and self-doubt can rob you of your peace, happiness, and purpose. You can break free from the mistakes of the past and embrace your identity in Christ. 
In this special package, you'll discover how to break the cycle of shame, where guilt really comes from, what forgiveness can produce, and how to receive God's hope. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Living Unashamed special package. It's time to embrace the life God has for you and leave the past behind. You can live with confidence and peace knowing God made you unique and special. I really want to encourage you to order those products. Don't delay because they're life-giving, they're faith-giving resources that are going to help you in your journey of becoming shame-free because when you apply the word and you hear the word, then it's getting down on you, on the inside of you, and it's going to make changes in your life. So make sure you get those products. So we're talking about boldly coming to the throne of grace. And one of the scriptures that changed my life through this process, through me pulling myself out of that shame pit that I was living in is Romans 8. And it says that nothing Nothing, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing from your past, nothing from your future, what you're going to mess up on, what you messed up in the past. Nothing separates you from the love of God. And when you really get a revelation of that, that no matter what you've done, that it's not going to stop God from loving you. Not only does he love you, he is love. He is the definition of love. So he just loves you. You're his child. So when you get a revelation of that, and that's just light going off on the inside of you, and you go, wow, God really does love me. Then nothing from your past can separate you from that love. Nothing that you've done, nothing that you've been through can separate you from knowing that God loves me. Psalms 3.3, 3. it says, But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. See, shame wants your head down. But when you get a revelation of the Father and his love for you, then your head is going to be lifted up. That's the kind of love that lifts your head up. Psalms 34.5 in the message, it says, You'll never wear that shame face again. See this face right here? There's no shame on that face because I gave it to God. All that shame, I gave it to him. He took that from me because he loves me and he lifted my head and he can do the same for you. He can lift your head with confidence because you know that you're loved by God. He will never shame you. He'll never condemn you. He just loves you. When I get around my parents to this day, they don't remind me of what I did back in 2007. They don't bring it up every single time they see me. No, we don't talk about it because it's not who I am. It's not a part of me anymore that I've been free from that. And that's the same with the Heavenly Father. He's not going to bring up what you did back then. I want to tell you that I want to read this story to you. I read this to my dad when the book was first being published, and um, I wanted to read it to him myself, and, and he teared up, and I just want you to see the love of a father. Now, this is my earthly father, but I want you to know that God is so pleased with you. He loves you so much, no matter what. So this is a story of when I first went to see my dad, you know, shame of Anyone recognized me in public had kept me from not going to see him for a long time, preach in person. I would listen to his CDs and I'd watch him on TV, but the shame had paralyzed me and trapped me to my home for a really long time. Well, one day I got up the courage and I'm just going to read it from here. I would listen to his messages at home through TV, but I was just too embarrassed to ever go to one of his meetings after my major mess up. I decided to drive to Oklahoma, far enough away from my hometown, just in case someone recognized me. I planned to sit in the back and just listen to him. I did not tell him I would be there. All I had ever known my whole life was sitting in church on the front row and listening to my dad preach. 
I was longing to be in his presence and hear his familiar voice again. I was not only there to hear my favorite preacher, Jerry Savelle, but I was really there just to see my daddy. My sin had separated us for a time, and there was a season that we weren't talking to each other a lot, but I missed him so much. I was relieved when no one in the church recognized me as his daughter. I slipped into my seat. I tried to hide myself, but I could just see enough to look at him through the aisles of people. The little building was packed and the people eager to hear his message. The pastor introduced my dad and he got up to speak. About five minutes into his greeting, he noticed me. His eyes lit up with recognition and joy as he said to the audience, well, there's my daughter back there. He said, Jerry, come up here and sat near me on the front row. As I got up out of my seat, and walked to the front, I could feel one more layer of shame falling off of me, layer after layer being removed of that shame. And that story reminded me of the prodigal son. It's talked about in Luke 15. I'm sure you know the story. But the prodigal son went off and splurged all his money and was, took his inheritance and was going off doing whatever he wanted to do. Well, one day he found himself eating with the hogs and he's in the middle of this slop eating with the hogs and he came to his senses and he said, what am I doing here? My dad's workers live better than I do. I need to go back home and I'll just be a servant to my dad just to get out of this mess. And I love the way it tells the story. It says, so the young man set off for home. From a long distance, his father saw him coming, dressed as a beggar. And great compassion swelled up in his heart for his son who was returning home. So the father raced out to meet him. He swept him up in his arms and he hugged him dearly and kissed him over and over with tenderly love. Then the son said, father, I was wrong. I have sinned against you. I can never deserve to be called your son. Just let me be. And the father interrupted him and said, son, you're home now. Quick, bring me the best robe, my very own robe, and I will place it on his shoulders. Bring the ring, the seal of sonship, and I will put it on his finger. And bring me the best shoes you can find for my son. Let's prepare a great feast and celebrate for this beloved son of mine was once dead, but now he's alive again. Once he was lost, but now he's found and everyone celebrated with overwhelming joy. Wow. What a story. Maybe you've been in that place where you're the prodigal son. Maybe you're there right now and maybe you don't have a dad like my dad, but you have a heavenly father that's saying, come home. Come home, I'm waiting for you. My arms are open wide for you right now. That's how much he loves you. That he doesn't care about what you did and your past, he doesn't care. He's just saying, come home. I love you. Let him celebrate your return. So I encourage you today to wipe away the tears as I'm doing right now. Walk back to Father God and say, Father God, I'm here. Get up in his lap. See yourself crawling up in the lap of God, your heavenly father, and saying, I'm here. I'm home. And let him put his arms around you and love you so that he can be the lifter of your head so that you no longer have to carry that shame and that weighted downness that you've carried for so long. Let him take the load off and let him love you back to sonship, back to who you were created to be. This is what God is saying to you now, to come home. He's placing his robe on you. He's placing his ring on you. And he's celebrating a feast for you right now. He's saying, come home to me. Psalms 31, 17 in the Passion Translation says, As I call upon you, let my shame and my disgrace be replaced by your favor once again. So he wants to take that shame that you've dealt with and he wants to replace it with his favor, his blessing, 
his increase. Everything that he has in store for you, he wants to replace the shame and give it back to you. So hold your head up high today because you're forgiven and you're loved. Get this down on the inside of you. Get a revelation of this that I am a child of God. Say that right now. I am a child of God. I am loved by him. And nothing can separate me from this love. And when you get a reality of that, the nothing that comes up from your past can ever cause you to ever feel down, shameful, regretful, guilty, all those things because you know who you are in Christ. And that you know that no matter what, that you're loved by God. Real quick, I want to go through. In the book, I discuss that the enemy brings condemnation when you do something. And there's a difference between condemnation and conviction. And I want to go through that real quick. You know, condemnation is something the enemy brings. He brings guilt and remorse and regret, and there's a big difference between condemnation and conviction. Conviction says, I've done something bad. Condemnation says, I am bad. And there's a big difference in that. The enemy is behind condemnation. It's not of God. But conviction is from God. It's the Holy Spirit prompting you that maybe you shouldn't do that, or maybe you He's correcting you. He's perfecting you. He's working out those things in you, but he does it in a loving way that says, hey, Jerry, you need to work on that thing. So when you get that prompting on the inside of you, then go with it. But God is never going to condemn you. He's never going to bring guilt, and you shouldn't have done that, and you know better. That's the enemy. When you hear the enemy say, you're a Christian, you should have known better, that's not God. But when you hear that prompting, that little thing that goes, ugh, maybe I shouldn't think that way, or I shouldn't say that, or I shouldn't do that, then you're going to know, oh, that's conviction from the Holy Spirit. Condem condemnation beats you over the head. It beats you with shame. It tells you how unworthy you are and what a failure you are. But condemnation obviously does not come from God because he's a God of love. So when you're feeling, maybe you're feeling something right now on the inside that you need to deal with something. You need to take it to Heavenly Father and deal with it. Then that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit telling you, deal with this thing right now. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So when you feel that condemning, guilty, not worthy feeling, then you know that is not from God, that that is from the enemy and don't accept it in your life. I want to read the difference with conviction now. So conviction says, on the other hand of condemnation, it's a prompting or a convincing from inside of you that gently corrects and moves you back to the truth and to righteousness, right standing with God. It reveals light to you from the light source, Jesus. It's not pushy, it's not haughty, it's not arrogant or hard like its counterpart condemnation. Conviction is not a bad thing. It is intended to cause you to assess where you're at and make the necessary changes. The Holy Spirit inspired conviction tenderly leads you back to relationship with Father God. Be grateful for the conviction of the Holy Spirit because he's your helper. So if you're feeling that now on the inside of you, that you need to correct some things, maybe forgive someone or forgive yourself or, or take whatever it is that you did. Maybe you never even went to God and talked to him about it, but take that thing, take it to him, release it to him, Get up in his lap and let him love on you and hold your head up high today that you're a child of God because he's the lifter of your head and you don't have to walk any longer with shame in your life that you can live unashamedly because of what Jesus has done for you on the cross. 
I can't wait to what we get into next week. We're gonna talk about that. But right now, look at this special offer and I'll be right back. Could fear and insecurity be holding you back from God's best for your life? Today's special offer, the Living Unashamed Special Package, contains Jerry Savelle's revealing book, You Were Created for His Glory, his three-part audio series, Overcoming the Spirit of Hopelessness, along with his daughter, Jerry Ann's eye-opening book, Living Unashamed. Shame and self-doubt can rob you of your peace, happiness, and purpose. You can break free from the mistakes of the past and embrace your identity in Christ. In this special package, you'll discover how to break the cycle of shame, where guilt really comes from, what forgiveness can produce, and how to receive God's hope. Don't delay. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Living Unashamed special package. It's time to embrace the life God has for you and leave the past behind. You can live with confidence and peace knowing God made you unique and special. I really want to encourage you to go and make yourself available to get these faith resources because faith's going to come when you put this down on the inside of you. This CD series here was part of my coming out of shame process. I would put this CD on overcoming the spirit of hopelessness, three CDs in here. I would put this on and listen to it over and over and over. So I encourage you just to, just to, if you're in that place where you're trying to come out of shame, then just put the word on and let it play throughout your home or in your car or wherever so that you're hearing the word. It's getting down on the inside of you and it's renewing the way you see yourself. It's renewing your mind. This is a book dad did called You Were Created for His Glory. This is my book, Living Unashamed, and I encourage you to get this. This is, I'm going through it the last several weeks, but it's more detailed in the book. So go ahead and don't delay. Go to jerrysavelle.org and order those resources now. I'd like to take just a moment and pray for you right now. Don't forget what we've talked about today, that Jesus is the lifter of your head and that when you boldly come to his throne of grace, that he's going to help you in time of need. So I'm praying over you right now that you get a true revelation of the love of God and that you let all of that junk, all of that stuff that you've been dealing with, that you get rid of it, you get free of it, you hand it to Father God, you lay it at his feet and you let him love on you today and you know how wonderful, how special you are to him, that you're his child and he's well pleased with you. So anything that happened back there is not a part of who you are and where you're going today, that he has an awesome plan for you, that if you got off course, that you can get right back on course doing what he's called you to do with your life. I encourage you, if you haven't watched the other messages, go back and watch them and you can come back next week and we'll wrap this up on Living Unashamed. Don't delay, go order the products at jerrysavelle.org. I'll see you again next time.